Hey guys, it's Jarrett. So today I'm coming to show you a new video on uh, another take of kind of like a file share process. I got the request from Submission Champ, and so I just want to say thanks for commenting. I know this video is a little late. It's been, I don't know, a couple months since I saw your post, and so I just kind of figured I'd circle back to it and kind of do a, another video on this. Let's just go ahead and get started and dive into this. Logic apps. So in this video, we're going to kind of do a review, a breakdown, and a summary. The review, I'm just going to kind of give you a big picture of our app, then do a breakdown to look at each action in our app and other options that I will hint to, uh, like I did at the beginning of this video, of other options from a file share to maybe a blob storage account, and then just a summary. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's try to keep this brief and simple. So our logic app, our logic app is going to be comprised of a file share, so most likely a VM, and then a blob storage account that you're moving those files from to, and then finally to maybe get a notification that the file has arrived in your blob storage account. That could be, you know, email, text, and possibly with the attachment. So let's dive into this. Hey guys, now that we're in the portal, let's try to keep this basic. We're just going to set with a recurrence. And what, what we're doing here is we're saying get a list of files and folder, which is just a action. And what that action is, is just a file system task. Take it sweet time. File system. It's this little green icon here. You might have to scroll through, but that's what it is. What you'll do is you'll need a Azure Data Gateway to access anything on-prem. That If you guys are wanting to know more about the Azure Data Gateway, please post a comment and I can make a video kind of breaking down the Azure Gateway. You'll need an Azure Data Gateway to get to this file share location. Once you do that, that is only for that specific folder. And, and if you go down through this and you're wanting to say, you know, in this folder, I always need to get each of those files. I need to get their contents and then I need to create those files inside a blob. So you pretty much do a, instead of, you know, list files and folder, we'll do a for each. And for each, we'll do another file system where we're getting the content. So file system task, and it would be a. get file contents right here. Once we get the contents, we're going to create the blob and when you create a blob, you will need a blob storage account to be able to create a blob in there. And all I'm saying is in that blob storage, you know, in that blob storage, I'm going to name it the file, I'm going to put it in that blob the file contents. And once I'm done with creating that blob, you would send an email out then I say, you know, I just sent it to myself, new blob. And what I did is say, you know, I, I wanted, let's remove this. What I did is say, oh, I, need, I want to know what got put into my blob storage account. I just checked attachments, checked off. And that's when I said, okay, I want to do the blob storage display name and Uh, then I want to do, you know, the contents, file contents from this blob. So now that I have the contents and the display name, I can also do, I also don't even need to do the blob. I can also do from the list of files. I can also do the name from here as well. It doesn't have to be from the blob. And then you know, fill out whatever information. You can set this also dynamic too. You know, if you are wanting to know the location, if you have it like mini blobs, you could do like location and do file location of the blob. So when you receive the email, you receive an email with the location. Now, something to note here is when this runs, whether it finds a blob or not, it's going to send you an email, which kind of stinks, right? That's not my, maybe that's not what you want. So 
but it, but it, this might be the design you're looking for. This might be the exact need. But let's say you just want a job that currently gets you to the blob and anytime a file gets added to a blob, then you want an email. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'm diving a little deeper now. But I think that's really what the need would be in this scenario is you'd only want an email in cases in which a file is added to a blob. So you'll do, and they've, and they've changed this. So if any time you guys see something that's awkward in one of my videos, most likely they changed it. So like it used to be logic apps and it just used to be one. They have now two options. I just choose the consumption option, create a new logic app. And this logic app, what it's gonna do is it's only gonna be triggered when a file gets added to a blob instead of always being emailed when a blob gets created. So we'll go ahead and start blank and we'll go say Azure blob storage. So when a blob is added or modified, you say, you know, maybe in here, bring back all the blobs and check every three minutes. So once it finds a new blob, right? So it's been added or modified. Now I want an email sent. Side note, these are different. Outlook.com and Outlook or Office 365 Outlook are completely different. Uh, I'm using Outlook. Okay, so now that we have the send email portion to myself, the, the body is new blob, and the subject is no, new blob, right? Now this is where it gets a little tricky. We have a couple options we can take on this route. We have one option in which you can get an email with the full list of all the blobs that were recently added or modified, or you can get an email per file slash modified file. So if you're just saying, you know, I, I just wanna know all of them, just send me one email with everything, don't send me multiples. You can just say, you know, just send me the list of the, the names and send me, locations right give me the path and then at that point you're gonna get a single email with all of them in there now if you're wanting a email per blob that's a little different we're gonna to need to get a list of all the blobs in that location or in the one that actually got triggered do that you can make that dynamic if needed and then we'll do at this point we need the contents so once we have the contents it could be name it also could be the file location but since now we have that info right we can now do for every f file we would now send out an email saying new blob attachment and then we would say here we would say file contents display name so now in this case only when a file gets added to the blob you're that's the only time you're gonna get an email instead of previously in which you're gonna get an email every single time so guys that really just sums up this hopefully kind of brief video on file shares to blob storage to an email and if you guys have any questions post in the comments uh, I don't think I, I I try to keep this brief and I didn't like really go into too much depth it was mostly just kind of a POC design then diving deep on what each of these do. If you're wanting more specifics, let me know. I can make more in-depth videos, but it seems like you just kind of want it short and simple. So I'm just going to keep doing that unless you guys want something more in depth. So thanks for watching. You guys stay fresh out there and I'll keep posting.